Do you want to get super sharp macro shots with a wide depth of field? If you do, consider using focus stacking. And in this video, I'll show you how. Hello, welcome to InStudio. I'm Ian M. Butterfield. If you do macro photography and you get frustrated by the shallow depth of field and you really want images that are sharp throughout the whole depth of that image, then the answer is to look at doing focus stacking. For that, you'll need some focusing rails and you'll need some software such as Adobe Photoshop to combine everything together. Let's start by looking at the setup. I'm photographing a small model Dalek for this uh, example. And there's a couple of things uh, uh, to look at with the setup. First of all, the, the background that it's on. Well, the background is just a sheet of uh, gray mounting board. And what I've got here is my own desktop studio setup. It's uh, two pieces of MDF with lots of holes um, made in it and then using little shelf supports to go in the holes to hold the, uh, the background paper or background card exactly where I want it uh, on there. And it gives me that nice seamless curve, uh, same as you would have in a, a studio for a background paper and uh, a subject for a portrait session. Then the camera uh, is sitting on tripod. On top of the tripod is a set of focusing rails. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the focusing rails in a moment. Uh, obviously trigger. I've got three light sources for this scene. Over in the far corner over there is a speed light coming across, giving me a rim light, uh, predominantly on this side of the, the model. Over here, We've got a, another speed light. I've put a blue gel on there uh, to give a, a blue effect on this side of the Dalek. We have one of the studio lights up here acting as a fill light. It's on very low power and the aim is just to uh, reduce the, the shadows on the Dalek. Some of the shadows are being filled in by the use of a card here, again, just bringing in that hint of blue light there. Very, very little in that. Uh, most of it's actually getting washed out by the main light. So that's the lighting setup. Why are there two lighting stands on here with a bit of card over the top? Well, that is preventing the lights spilling from uh, up here onto the background because I want to maintain the background uh, being very sharp. So how do we use the focusing rails? Well, we start off with using the, the main slider and because we want to move the focus point through the image from front to back, we set this at nine and a half. And I'm using the edge of the, the mount here against the scale. So that's at nine and a half uh, and the scale goes from zero to 10. Now I want to, because I'm now looking at the most, the, the most front point, which is the sucker on the Dalek there. I want to focus on that. I'm going to do that using live view because that's much more accurate. So let's go into live view. And so that I can see what I'm doing, I'm just going to zoom in five times, 10 times. It's completely out of focus. So if I focus that, just manually focus on there and I've got it spot on with that and come out of live view and take a test shot. And I can look at that and decide, yep, that will do nicely as, a, as an image on there, happy with that. So now I know I've got that, I can create the whole sequence of images that I need for stacking. And a couple of tips on this. Although I focused on the front there, just to protect myself, just in case I'm slightly out on the focusing, I'm now going to move this, instead of from nine and a half that I set it to, I'm going to move it backwards to 10, which just brings the focus point initially just forward of the Dalek, which means I know I've got images at critical points going all the way through. So, how, how much do I take? 
how many shots do I take and how far apart? Well, if you look up uh, this lens, it's a Sigma 105, I'm on full frame, fr frame sensor, I'm shooting at f8, and it's f8 because that's where the lens is at its sharpest. If you go to one of these depth of field calculators, it will actually tell you it's about uh, one to one and a half centimeter uh, depth of field. Now, that's the depth of field. It's not necessarily the area of critical sharpness. And I know from experience that if I was to set it at one centimeter, the, the, the joins between the images would be slightly blurry at those joins. So half a centimeter means everything will be in absolute critical focus. So that's what I'm going to use. So now I'm going to take the first shot and so that I know it's the first shot in the sequence, I'm going to put a finger in, take the shot, and then take the shot for real. I can now step this through half centimeter, nine and a half, nine, eight and a half, eight, seven and a half, seven, six and a half, six. And the thing with this is I carry on until I know I've gone beyond the back of the Dalek. Now I can look at that and go five centimeters, probably all the way through. I'll do a few more just to be on the safe side. Four and a half. Four, three and a half, three. And I know now I've gone all the way through there. And so that I can know it's the end of the sequence on here for my final shot, I'm gonna stick two fingers in and just retake the shot again. And that means as I look at all the images in Lightroom, I can see the entire sequence from one finger to two fingers in the display. So that's the practical side of using the focusing rails. There is another adjustment on here and it's a side by side, side to side one. Not needed it for, uh, for this particular setup. That's used for, order, for just general focusing and repositioning if you need to do it. I haven't needed to on here. Uh, so I've got all the shots I need. So I'm gonna strike all this and then set back up uh, with Lightroom and I'll show you how we do the editing process. Welcome back, and I'm back in Lightroom. So all the images are in there because I was shooting tethered. All I've done so far is to use the two images with the fingers in to find the beginning and end of the sequence, tagged the images in between with a pick flag, and I've enabled the um, uh, filtered on the attribute of the pick flag. So I've now got, well, 13 different images of the Dalek, all focused at different points. So if I look at this one full screen, you can see that we're focused just in front of the sucker. So I move on to the next one. That's the one that's uh, fully in focus on the sucker and so on. As I step through, you can see that area of focus moving back through the, the Dalek. So what we need to do now is to combine all those images together. But before we do that, we need to edit them in Lightroom to get the, uh, uh, the images looking right. So over in the develop module, we're gonna start with the first image. I shift click on the last one and then enable auto sync. What this means is that anything I do to the first image, those corrections will be applied to all of them. So actually it doesn't have to be the first image, it can be any of them. It's probably easier to choose one of the middle images to do this work on. Now this one's one of the middle ones and you can see with it actually focusing is not bad, the back is out, the, uh, the sucker is out, but everything else is fine on there, which is what you'd expect as we're stepping through. So I'm just going to do the edits on here and uh, those will get applied to all the images in the sequence. And the first thing I want to do, basic module, I just want to add a little bit more contrast to it. 
and I would like to add a bit more vibrance, bring out the colour a little bit better on there. Um, right, let's see what else we might need to do with it. I could do with just raising the shadows a little bit, do it in curves, get a better result on that, and possibly bringing the highlights down a fraction as well, maybe the lights down a bit. That's starting to look quite good on there. Now, back over onto basic, maybe just a hint of saturation with it. Definitely want some clarity in there, give it a bit of punch in the mid-tones, maybe add a little bit of texture to it as well. And that's looking quite good. Um, happy with that, I think, for the image. Well, what about white balance? Just set that to flash because that's what I was working with. Yeah, it's made it a little bit bluer. Am I happy with that? Probably. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go with that. So I've got all those images edited and you'll see if I move to any of them, they've all got the same settings as we go through. Uh, the, of course, it changes size in the frame because we're moving the camera in closer. So now what I need to do is I need to get all those images into uh, Photoshop, which is where I will combine them together. So go over to the grid module and if I select all 13 images, right click, edit in, and select open as layers in Photoshop. It will now start up Photoshop and open the images. I'm not gonna make you sit through all that, Join me back when it's opened them all. It can take a few minutes to do that. Here we are in Photoshop. First thing to do in Photoshop is to align all the images. As I said, uh, as we disable one layer upon, you can see the effect of zooming in as the camera moved further in. So I'm just gonna enable them all back again so the first thing to do now is to align all those layers. And we do that uh, by first of all, selecting all the layers. We've already clicked on the top one, click on the shift, click on the bottom one, edit, auto align layers. And auto will work nicely on there and just click okay. As simple as that. Now again, this is one of those tasks which takes a little while to run, so, I'll uh, fast forward the video uh, to the point where it's completed. All our layers are aligned and we can see down here varying amounts of white space around them. Alt click on the eye shows just one layer at a time. Alt click on it again to bring all the others back in. And uh, you can see how the sizes of the images have been changed so that they all line up now. Next thing, simple task, we need to make sure all the layers are selected then edit, auto blend layers, and we are choosing to stack the images. And I tend to leave content aware fill uh, enabled on there, uh, seamless tones and colors, that works best. And I click okay. And once again, uh, there's a, a wait while uh, Photoshop does its thing. So again, I'll fast forward the video to the point when that's completed. And there we go, the task is complete. And I go full screen. You'll be able to see that our Dalek is perfectly sharp. Uh, right, let's go to 100%. I'm at 100% magnification. And can you see just how sharp that image is on there? Every bit of it is perfectly in focus, perfectly sharp. Something that you would never have got with a single frame. One thing to note about the, uh, the image is that we have Lots of layers with masks on, and that's how it does it. So again, Alt, 
and one of the eyepieces. You can see which sections are actually taken from each layer. It's quite fascinating to just sort of go through and uh, have a look at how the algorithm works like that. So I put them all back uh, to our Dalek. And the only thing that uh, we need to do on here is to add some text. I just happen to have a font called Dalek enabled and I'm going to choose a yellow colour for it, something along those sorts of lines. And we need a large font, about 36, even 48. And of course, what else would a Dalek be saying? But exterminate. And then Control T to get hold of this and just bring it at a quirky angle. Change the size of it. And there we have our finished focus stacked Dalek uh, image taken from uh, uh, 13 shots combined together in Photoshop. The final step in the editing on this is one that uh, is optional, uh, but I, I think it's worth doing it on this. I'm not normally one for deleting and flattening layers, but this becomes a very, very large file with 13 full res images layers on there. The actual combined image has been saved as its own layer, but that automatically happens. So the remaining layers that were used to create it uh, can now be deleted. So hit the delete icon. And there we are, the merge layer and the text. And that really is all we need to save. So there we are, our exterminating Dalek. Focus stacked using 13 images, created using focusing rails to ensure we have the images at set distances through the image, through the, the subject, all combined together in Photoshop to produce our final shot. So thanks for watching. For more hints and tips on how to improve your photography, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon, and watch one of the videos that's on the screen now. Until next time, keep making great photos. And I'll see you later. Bye for now.